All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Steve Jackson with Imprintables Warehouse, and we're in the webinar, Digital Heat Transfer Media, Choosing the Right Media for the Job. I want to thank everyone for taking a little time out of their busy day this afternoon to join me, and hopefully we're going to have a lot of great content here for you to help you narrow down those selections and make sure that you're getting the right media for the right job. So to begin everything off, we do have a couple of poll questions, and I always like to get them out of the way in the beginning of the webinar so we can move on to content. So we'll have those pop up here in a second. First one is, do you use digital heat transfer medias? Uh, this may be ones that you do yourself. If you've got a printer, cut, printer cutter or a print machine and a separate cutter, or uh, if you're getting them made through somewhere else, uh, maybe you're getting CAD prints from stalls or somewhere else. But do you currently use digital heat transfer medias? Should be a pretty quick response. Um, yep, we'll close. Okay. So it looks like 91% do use. And I, I kind of suspected that most of the people here would be already using it, um, so that's a pretty easy one, but we wanted to see how many of you out there weren't. So next poll question come up. What model of printer do you use? Uh, select all that apply, a Mamaki, Roland, Muto, or other. If you've got some other print and cut device or some other print only device, um, there's several uh, rebranded ones out on the market. Looks like most of our results have come in. I'll just give it one more second. And I'm going to close. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and Mostly the Roland. Mostly the Roland and then other. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd be interested. Anybody who marked other, if you, if you feel up to it, shoot me an email uh, after the webinar and let me know what type of printer you're using. I'd, I'd love to get that data. Okay, third question. We only have four today. And what digital heat transfer media do you use the most? I've listed out the main ones that we're going to talk about here and by no means all of the medias that are out there, but quick print, eco print, express print, and solutions opaque and other. Uh, would cover anything other than that. And again, on that this question, uh, you could either type it into uh, the, the question area in the chat screen, or you can send me an email. I'd, I'd love to hear what other medias you guys are using out there. Um, we do have a, a social forum network that I'm going to talk about at the end of the webinar, where there's a lot of help and uh, given out there to the print and cut devices. And uh, if there's other medias out there that we can assist with, we'd like to know about it as well. And then we'll share those results. So okay, a lot of people using the Express Print, great, great product. Um, solutions will take a little bit lower than I thought, but we're going to talk about that. A lot of people have difficulties with that material, and we're going to talk about some of the ways that you can work around that and get a, a great end product out of it. And the last one, do you currently outsource digital heat transfers? This question applies in a couple different ways. The, if you don't have a print and cut device, all those people may be outsourcing it. But I'm also curious if those of you that have a digital print and cut device that are still outsourcing some of it when you get to a certain quantity or something along that lines, if your production isn't able to keep up with it. OK, so I think we'll close right now. Looks like everybody pretty right. much voted. So over half are still outsourcing. Oh, OK. So uh, of those half that are outsourcing, um, again, that would be another piece of data that I'd love to get uh, as to who you're outsourcing it to uh, so we can know the different lines that are out there. So thank you, Jody, for assisting me with those uh, poll questions. Now we'll no problem, Stephen. Now we'll the webinar. Let's see if I can get this guy to go. There we go. OK, so a basic overview. Um, we're going to go over the different media types and break it down by uh, what basic categories there are. We're going to talk about the fabric types for each one of those medias and what's the best solution for them. Um, break down each of the medias into, we've got the media types and then underneath the media types there's going to be different categories of the medias after that. We're going to talk about some proper print techniques and how you can make sure you get the best results out of your medias. Uh, things like drying time and profiles and things like that, which is the next one. And we're also going to talk about some of those difficult medias. Uh, the poll question up there showed solutions opaque on the low side, but I think if people uh, see 
the ways that you can work with it to get a, a very good usable product in the end, it's an amazing product and can apply to virtually anything. So it's really good to work with once you understand the difficulties with it. So break down the media types. Um, the media types are pretty pretty cut and dry. You've got opaque based. Opaque based is going to be anything that goes onto a dark garment. Um, the example we have in this one here is a light gray t-shirt off to the side. If I didn't have an opaque based media, I wouldn't get that white being on there. Uh, then we've got our clear base, which is going to work with any white or light colored pastel garments. You keep in mind that your clear based media, it's like a window pane. Think of like stained glass. And the inks themselves are translucent. So if I'm putting that onto a dark garment, you lose all of the ink on there and you won't see the image at all. Then the next one we have down is subblock. Subblock is a, a type of media that's out there to stop dye migration. This is all your polyester garments that have a dye in there. We see it a lot on the sports jerseys, uh, specifically soccer. I see a ton of uh, problems out there in the market where the dye is migrating into the opaque base media. And say we have a red garment, and now it's a pink color in the areas where it should be white. Uh, the next one down is low temp applications. Anybody who's worked with a polypropylene bag knows this one. Uh, those little drawstring bags that go over the back when you try to heat press to it at, say, 300 to 320 degrees, they, they don't tend to play too well and, and tend to shrivel up and sometimes melt against the heat press. And anybody who's ever done it knows it's a pain in the butt to clean that off. We've got a couple specialty medias. We're going to talk about some metallic stuff and uh, reflective medias. And then we're going to break down the different mass types that are used with each one of these medias and why you want to go with one over the other. So let's first start talking about the opaque based medias. Um, the, the ones that we're going to talk about in this lecture are imprintables medias. We have Solutions Opaque, Quick Print, Eco Print, Color Print, Color Print 2, and Color Print Plus. Uh, well, let's break down each one. You can see on the, the picture there that we've got it again on a darker shirt. And if it wasn't an opaque based media or white based media, uh, the color of the shirt would be shining through and some of your ink's colors would be changed as well because, like I said, they're translucent and they act like a stained glass. So if I put a color behind it, it can sh shift that color. The first one on that list, Solutions Opaque, uh, it's, it seems like it's such a love-hate relationship with this media. I'll, I'll be helping a customer out that's just having so many difficulties with it and tell me, Steve, I can't get it to cut right. It curls. It, it does. It's not staying on the backing properly and everything. Um, so there are some difficulties with it, and we'll get to those. But this thing will apply to almost anything. Have people apply it to nylon to leather, to spandex. It stretches like nobody's business. You can put this on a spandex garment, just stretch away, and it goes back to its original position. Super, super thin. The hand on this is very, very light. Um, but because of those two things, the super thin and the super stretch, it can be very difficult to weed. Now, what I want everybody to think about with this material, and one way we can work around that difficulty for the weeding, is if I've got a piece of paper towel on it sitting on a countertop, and I take a sharp knife and I cut through it, that paper towel will stay relatively flat. It's not going to rip or tear or, or stretch or anything like that. And then I can put some water on it and everything will stay where it was. But now if I reverse that process and I put a bunch of water on that paper towel and then I take that same knife and drag it through there, it's going to rip and tear and crumple and pull in places and not be nearly as neat and clean as it was before. The point to this is, if I print and then cut directly onto Solutions Opaque, even though the media may be dry to the touch, the media itself on a, a sub-level is still damp from those solvent inks being in there. They take up to 24 hours to gas out. So as I'm dragging that, that cutting blade through it, if it's not a brand new, clean, super sharp blade, it's going to pull on that stretchy material. And it pulls and tends to curl up and have all these negative effects. I've heard all sorts of different solutions out there from many, many different people. I'll have people tell me that, uh, well, I, I print it with registration marks and I let it sit overnight and then I load it back into the machine and then I cut it from there finding the registration marks. That will work because you've allowed the gases, to, to the, the solvent rather, to gas out of that material and now you're cutting through a completely dry media. I've had people tell me that they, they send it to print and they give it an extended dry time from their RIP program. Uh, where they can have it sit on the outside of the printer there, and then it'll suck the media back in and do the cutting. 
that will work also because it's giving it more time to dry. Uh, what we found with most medias is that you want to give them at least 30 minutes before you're masking it and working with it. So in the instance where you're hanging it out to dry off the end of the machine, you're probably going to have to do close to that. Well, that's a long time to have your machine sitting there. So the technique that I've used most successfully, and I've talked to a lot of people, is within the RIP program, I tell it to cut the graphic first and return to origin after it's cutting. So it'll cut it all, it'll wheel it out, and then it brings it back to its origin, and then I tell it to print only on top of that already cut media. What this does is that whole paper towel analogy. I've cut the paper towel and now I'm putting the water on top of it, and it's not going to shift or curl or do any of those other issues that we talked about. Um, so this is a, a faster way of doing your production and an easier way of working with this material. Now I'm going to put a little caveat on that. It doesn't work with every design. If I have a very fine line design, say like eagle feathers or fine tips on those, those eagle feathers in the design, or say a, a starburst where it's got all these fine points all over this and real thin lines, it's still going to want to curl and pull up off of that because it's still damp on there and that material is very stretchy and very thin. So on those designs, you'd be better off by adding a contour outside of the design and giving it a little white edge around it and then cutting through that white edge because that's an unprinted area, it's not a real fine line, and it's going to hold it down. So a lot of times with Solutions Opaque, if I've got a super detailed design, you're going to see it's got a white area around it, a little bit of a contour out to keep that media down. You can also, once you have it all printed and cut, if it's stayed down and you, you've designed it correctly, and you've made sure you haven't used any sharp corners and you've got it all set, you can mask this material before you eat it. What that allows you to do is to take the backing off after you've masked it, and you can weed from the backside. And when we weed from the backside, the mask itself is sticky, it's tacky. So if I've made any mistake or an edge is curling up or pulling up or anything like that, we can simply place it back down and it's going to stay where it needs to on there. Much easier than trying to weed it all and having all those areas curl up and then trying to mask on top of that. And then you've got to go back through your weed with your weeder from the backside and flatten them all out and everything. This will help with a lot of the issues with this material. Um, one other thing that you cannot do with this, well, you can do it with the material, but I, I see it as a, um, can be a problem with some customers, is I don't want to do a large design with solutions opaque on a cotton garment. Like we said, this material is super thin and super stretchy. If I do, say, a, a full back on a, a cotton garment, even if it's a pre-shrunk garment, it's still going to shrink some. No matter how much they've done in treatment and everything at the factory, when we get this, it's still going to shrink some. That solution's opaque because it is so thin and stretchy, can't really push back against the shirt and hold itself flat. So what it's going to do is it, it, the garment is pulling it in, it's going to get some wrinkles and almost like a parchment look, or the phrase that we've heard the most is people call it the raisin effect, where it looks like it's got the, the raisin edges. Um, this is, some people see it as a positive, some people see it as a negative. I would only see it as a positive if you're going for that effect on a garment. Uh, it typically doesn't isn't affected by small like a left chest design or something like that because it's not a whole lot of area for it to bunch in on. But when we're doing those larger garments, say a full back or something like that, it, it can give a negative effect to it. So solutions opaque on a, a cotton, even if it's pre-shrunk, I, I personally would not do it, um, but that's up to the end user. You, it will apply to it, it will hold to it, and it will work, but it can have some of that wrinkling effect. So solutions opaque, I, I think it's a great material. And the, the, the best part about it is that it can apply to almost anything. So let's move on to the next one. Quick print. This, this quick print is a fantastic material. It applies to cotton, poly, cotton, poly blends. I can't tell you how many shops I go into and how many customers I meet at the trade shows, come to my training courses and everything, that absolutely love this material and, and use it over and over and over again. You can do fine detail with it, super easy to weed. Uh, with the right profile, it's got great color reproduction. You can hit a lot of the colors that you're looking for. It does have a glossy finish, which some people don't like. If you don't like the glossy finish, you can use a craft paper. When you, after you've pressed it and you've removed your mask, use a craft paper and it'll dull out the finish on it. Um, you do want to use Evolution's mask with this one. Uh, that will, it, it's got a tackier adhesive to it and it will pull it up and keep it a little bit better. Uh, this, this material is just very soft very good hand on it. A lot of people, when, when they first feel it on a garment, they might say, oh, it's got a little bit of a hand on it. I always tell customers, wash it once or twice. 
once you've had it through the wash a couple times, you'll feel how soft it gets, and it kind of melts into the garment. Uh, it's, a, it's a great product. The only negative I've heard about it from customers is they don't like the glossy finish. The craft paper trick will reduce the shine on this material, and it will give it much more of a matte finish. So quick print, one of my all-time favorites and a favorite of a lot of our customers. The next one on here is EcoPrint. This is the only material uh, that I found other than Express Print out there that has a true matte finish to it. Um, it does apply to cotton, poly, cotton, poly blends. Again, fine detail, easy to weave, color, great color reproduction if you have the right profile. Uh, and that matte finish is the biggest thing in there. In between quick print and eco print, um, a lot of people will say that they're, they're virtually identical except for the finish. Uh, eco print is slightly thinner. Um, some people have said that it's got a little bit more of a paper feel to it. Uh, but again, this is another one of those materials that once you wash it once or twice, it softens up fantastic on the shirt and really is a great one to work with. So for me, it kind of breaks down to am I looking for a glossy finish or a matte finish? Now, both of these materials are not nearly as thin as Solutions Opaque. Um, now, we're talking on Micron's level when I say nearly as thin. They are very thin materials, but compared to Solutions Opaque, they are thicker. Uh, and they will not be affected by those cotton, cotton poly blends with them shrinking at all. It will resist the shrinkage of the garment, and it will stay flat. So that, that negative effect that we talked about with Solutions Opaque, when you have a cotton garment that's shrinking up, you won't see it with either one of these two materials. So the biggest difference between quick print and eco print, matte finish on eco print. You don't need to do the craft paper at all for it. A lot of people say that the matte finish does have a more of a screen print finish to it. So uh, a lot of people are trying to get that effect out there. We'll go with it as well. Color print, um, this one similar to the other ones applies to cotton. Cotton poly blends can do fine detail. I love to call this thing the Timex of medias. Uh, takes a licking and keeps on ticking. This is my preferred media when I'm working with, say, duffel bags, backpacks, football jerseys, anything that's going to take a ton of abuse. I, I think this material is held up better than any other I've seen on the market for just straight physical abuse against it. Uh, this is the only one that I know of that can be thermal resin printed as well. So if, you, if those of you out there, we had some others in the, the different printers. If you've got a, a thermal resin printer, you can use it with this. It is a polyester back and you want to use TTD mask with this, which is a low-tack mask. Uh, very easy to work with material. Uh, the only thing that I've heard from customers on the negative side with it is it is a little bit thicker than quick print and eco print, and it has a slightly more paperish feel onto it. So, but if, for anything that I'm working with where I, I need it to have that Timex effect and take a lick and keep on ticking, this is uh, my media of choice for that. Color print 2 is very, very similar to color print. It's slightly thinner than the color print material, has all the same characteristics. It is a paper backing versus the polyester backing, the mylar backing. A lot of people prefer the plastic or mylar backings, but if you learn the proper way to do a test cut on your machine and watch for your blade condition, paper backing is not a negative thing. Um, it's actually less expensive so that uh, that cost is translated over to you as the customer so that you can get a cost savings on it. So if you cut too deeply into a paper backing, though, it makes it harder to weave, and the material can pull up at the edge because that blade has kind of pushed a little bit of the material into the paper backing, and when you go to weed it or when you mask it and pull it off, you can get some of that paper backing on there. So I, I can't stress enough with these paper, this one and other paper back materials to make sure that you have a proper cutting pressure and you're, you're doing good test cuts on your media so that you make sure you're not cutting into that backing and causing that effect. Um, again, very similar to color print, but uh, a little bit thinner in the paper backing. Color print plus. The plus says it all on this one. It applies to cotton poly, poly blends, and it has a little extra adhesive, so it can be applied to nylon. If I've got uh, nylon garments that I'm not looking to use solutions opaque on, which because of its thin and stretchy properties is a more expensive media, uh, the Color Print Plus will work great for me on those nylon media, uh, the nylon garments and products that I need to apply to that I need that extra adhesive to get into there. You can use it for fine detail, just like the others. And Evolution's mask on this one, we need a little bit heavier mask, a little bit tackier mask. Now we are going to break down the different masks at the end, of, towards the end of the webinar, and talk about which one has a low, medium, and high tack, and temperature resistance and stuff like that. 
but this one you do need a little bit heavier tack to it to get it off the backing properly. So you use that evolutions mask. Next category is the clear based medias. And out of the clear based medias, uh, there's there's really two solutions clear and air tech. And let's uh, jump into those. And you can see uh, in the the picture here on the the two medias, or I'm sorry, with the uh, the white garment there. If if I done that with say uh, solutions opaque or even quick print, um, I don't need the white of the material for it because the garment itself is white, and that would be a much heavier material that I would be putting onto the garment, and it wouldn't have as soft a hand or as light a feel. Solutions are clear. This applies to almost any any fabric. It's uh, white or light pastel garments only. The reason I say that is, like we said at the beginning of this webinar, is that if this was a dark garment here, if this was black, you wouldn't see any of that ink. The inks are translucent. If you're to print this onto any clear media, um, be it a heat transfer media or, say, a clear decal material, static cling, and pull it off of its backing and hold it up to light, you'll see it's kind of like a stained glass window. And if you hold it in front of something that's very dark, the inks just get totally lost and you've lost your print. You need that white opacity to give it that punch off of a, a darker garment. Um, solution's clear, super thin, super stretchy. You want to make sure you mirror the Im image because you're going to print it onto this material, print it and cut it in a mirror image, and then you don't need any mask whatsoever on this. You can just flip it right over and apply it onto the garment, and you pull the backing off of the garment after it's applied. So there's no mask needed for this. Now, I've got down at the bottom here, leave an unprinted edge around the graphic. This is very important. A lot of times I'll have people that are having difficulties with either Solutions Clear or AirTech, the next one we're going to have here, and they're telling me that it's, it's bubbling up on the backing or it's pulling in, it's, it's not printing correctly, and it's just becoming a mess for them. What they're doing is similar to that Solutions Opaque, they're printing and cutting right into a printed area. Now, remember, this is very thin, very stretchy and it wants to kind of pull back in. It's been heated up on the printer, it's had some ink put onto it, so now it's damp. Even though it might be dry to the touch when it gets fully off of that printer, it's still at a sub-level damp from those solvents being on there. And then we cut it, on a, especially with a, a detailed image, and it's going to want to pull back because that ink is, is saturated on there and it's making the, the media shrink up a little bit. So you just want to contour out slightly, have your cut line go into an uh, an unprinted area, and that unprinted area, maybe like a, an eighth of an inch or less, will, will give it enough hold down on the backing that it's not going to shrink back because there's no ink in that area to affect it. Now remember this is clear. If I pull this thing off and hold it up to light, or even if I pull it off the backing, it, it looks like saran wrap, and it stretches just like that too. So if, if I've got a little bit of clear area, kind of a bubble around it, and I apply it to the garment, the customer will never see that. Now, say in this example here, we've got the AZN, uh, or not AZN, I don't know my Greek letters very well, uh, the Alpha, Zeta, Omega here. Inside the Omega or inside in between the Alpha and the Zeta right there, um, I would cut that out. I wouldn't leave that completely filled with the solutions clear because then I've just got a whole bunch of area there that's blocking any breathability of the garment. And over an entire large area, you can see it a little bit. It's got a little bit of a glossy finish to it. So I, I would want to cut that out there, but an eighth of an inch around this, nobody will see that. So this material here is actually what uh, sold me on my first Roland Versa cam six years ago. I was given a sample of it at one of the trade shows on a piece of spandex, Solution Clear on there, and I went around almost the whole day with that in my hands, stretching it and stretching it and stretching it, and just absolutely amazed that it went back to the original shape no matter how much I stretched it, no matter how much I distorted it, and it didn't ruin the print on there. It blew me away. So this is one of my all-time favorite materials. Next one on here is Aerotech. Very similar to the Solutions Clear. Uh, like the other one, it applies to almost any fabric, white or light pastel garments only. But the, the unique feature about this media is that it leaves the holes open in the garment. So you see this mesh jersey that we have here, the Bulldogs. I don't know if you guys can see it. I hope you can. Right down in here on the dark outline for it, or maybe in the nose right there, it's a little bit more apparent. Um, you can see that the holes are open on the garment. What it does is it when you heat press it on there and after you remove it from the garment, remember we don't mask this material, you mirror the image just like Solutions Clear, and we apply it right on there. So I'm pulling the backing off. If you were to hold the backing up afterwards, you would see all those hole areas would be little dots of the print still on the backing. It's amazing how this works on there, and it, it leaves that open, leaves it very breathable. 
Um, I had one customer that did something pretty unique with it. He found some large mesh football jerseys that he was putting it on. And instead of throwing away that paper that had all those holes on it when he was done, that was the portion of the image right there, he took a lady's t-shirt and he pressed it onto there and sold it as a add-on to the football garment, or football jersey rather, so that the football player could have his girlfriend have a matching interlocking shirt. Pretty clever idea and he sold a lot of them and he was and uh, throwing that away and making waste out of it. So you, you can always find different ways to use these, these products. And again, just like uh, Solutions Clear, I want to leave an unprinted edge around the graphics so that it doesn't pull in. Remember, when we put those inks on, it's at a certain temperature. That media is heated up. It's nice and warm, and we're putting some liquid onto it, that solvent. It's not completely dry, so I want to give it a little bit of ability to hold down on the backing. Low temperature application. Boy, I, I get lots of phone calls on this, lots of questions on this. Uh, uh, polypropylene drawstring bags that people try to heat press onto. And I'll have customers tell me, yeah, I was using Solutions Opaque, and I was trying to apply it at uh, 300 and uh, just over 300 degrees. I'd lowered the temperature a little bit, or maybe they took it down to 290, and they're still melting the garment, and they're trying to find a good dwell time. Well, we have a solution to that. It's, it's called Spectrosolar Print. This material will apply at 210 degrees. All of those low temperature applications, the polypropylene drawstring bags, umbrellas, um, awnings, any canvas material out there that has a low melt temperature, anything that has a low melt temperature, you can now apply with this material. Uh, it does have a mylar backing, and I've got on here, use Evolution's mask. This material onto the backing, because of the design of it, the low temperature application and the adhesive that is used, is a little bit more difficult to remove from the backing. So you want to make sure you use a high-tech or high-tack mask so that you can pull it off cleanly from there. So that, that's the only issue that I've heard from customers is that they have a tough time masking it or removing from the backing. Um, the biggest plus of this material, just the 210 degree application temperature, uh, haven't found anything else on the market that can do that. So this uh, opens up into all those areas where we traditionally couldn't have printed onto. All right, into the specialty medias and sub-block in here. We've got a, a whole list in here, and uh, let's head each one of them. Solutions Metallic, there's, there's a lot of people out there that were very enamored by the um, VS series printers from Roland. Um, the maki has got a series of printer out there that has metallic inks along with the VS series, the BN20 that has metallic inks into it, and they, they saw this as a way to get a metallic specialty effect onto the garments out there. While these machines will print that metallic ink onto any of the medias, the metallic ink doesn't bite in the same as the other solvent inks and tends to sit on top of the media. So the effect that you'll get is it might look great on the garment at first, but after about five washes, it's going to start washing out. And that's true with any material that I've tested out there, and I've tested a lot of them. I have not found any material that those metallics will bite into. The same with any of the signed vinyls or anything like that. All the manufacturers that have printers that use the metallic inks will tell you you need to laminate those inks to have them be durable on it because they don't bite into the material. They don't bite into the media. So I have this other material here, those solutions metallic, which is already metallic. It's a very silver, shiny, metallic media, and we can print onto it. This stuff is, is great for specialty effects. If I want to have that metallic sheen to it, say like a race car team, and they want to have that, that metallic sheen in there, and they've got a silver bolt going down it, and gold metallic accents and everything, I can print directly onto this. Now remember, your colors for the metallic, the inks are translucent, with eco-solvent inks. So when we print onto this, I can print a red metallic. I can print a gold metallic, a blue metallic, because the base media is a silver metallic, and then I'm putting that translucent ink on top of it, and now I'm getting that color of metallic shining through the ink and giving it that tint to it. So you can get all those effects that you're looking for without using metallic inks. Uh, metallic inks are great for the sign industry. So far, I have not seen much of a use for them in the, the garment industry. The Solutions Metallic uh, will apply to almost any fabric. And uh, you want to use Evolution's mask with this. You need a higher tech, higher tack mask, mask. Ooh, I'm having a tough time with that today to pull this off of there properly for the garment. Um, 
again, a fantastic material. It is a little bit more expensive than most of the media is out there, but it gets you that metallic effect onto the garment. Solution subblock um, completely dye, blocks dye migration and applies to almost any fabric. Many, many times I'll be talking to customers and they're, they're working with those soccer jerseys, those football jerseys, dye sublimated, anything out there. Uh, motocross is a, is a big one out there too that has these dye, uh, dye, dyed garments. Excuse me, I'm stumbling on some words today. And the problem that they have is any of the medias that they're using to heat transfer onto it is, is having that dye migrate into it. And anybody who's ever heat pressed any white material onto a red polyester jersey or garment that has been dyed sublimated or dyed in general, we'll see that white media turn pink. Uh, solution sublock completely stops that. If you take this material apart, you see the back of it is a, it's a very shiny metallic sheen to it. It's a, it's a metallic kind of layer in there that blocks that dye migration. Um, the one negative people have said about it is it, it's fairly thick. It's got a heavy hand to it not breathable at all. Um, so it does solve the problem of dye migration, but it does have its drawbacks too. Um, with the quick print sublock, the one below that, much softer hand. This is a newer material to the market. Um, it does not have that metallic layer. It uses more of a chemical process to, to block that uh, dye migration in there. You can cut fine detail with it, whereas the solution sublock, because of the, the way it, the layers are and everything there, it's, it's not as easy to do that fine detail. You're, you're going to have more difficulties working with it. The quick print sublock, we did a lot of testing with it, worked with uh, a lot of customers out there and had them test it that were having these dye migration issues. And I'm happy to say it's a fantastic product and it does block the dye migration. So you, you can feel confident working with those teams and those garments and not have to worry about that. Um, the last one I have on here this one's not in our catalogs. It is still available on the website, and uh, we do still carry it. Reflect print, and it does just what it says there. It's a reflective media, so it's kind of similar to the Solutions Metallic in that it's got that silver sheen to it, but it's got reflective properties to it. You can print directly onto this and then apply it to uh, a, any garment out there I, I, with the cotton, cotton poly blends and, and those. Uh, it's great for your fire. EMS, security, any police organization or anything like that where they're looking for that reflective sheen to it. The inks do shift color when you put it onto there. What that, what I mean by that is if I put a blue on there, it's going to be a blue kind of metallic finish to it, and it will still reflect through it. It will be diminished in reflectivity through that ink printed area. So you do, if you're looking for a true reflective property off of this and want to have uh, meet, say, like the ANSI requirements for reflectivity for safety workers, um, you want to make sure that you have open area on that that has just the reflect portion too because say that, that the blue for uh, EMS for the Star of Life, we're putting that onto a garment form, the blue will still reflect, the ink will let that reflect come through it, but it's diminished. It's not as bright as just a straight area that doesn't have a print on it. So if you're working with this material and putting it onto those safety garments and they're trying to meet the ANSI requirements, you'll want to make sure that uh, you leave enough area open or you add some other reflective elements to that garment in other areas to be able to meet the requirement on it. But another great material to work with, uh, I know a lot of shops that have done very well with it in the, those specific industries like the fire, EMS, and police that we were talking about. But uh, don't count out your safety workers, all the uh, construction workers, roadside people, or even, say, security at an event venue or something along that line, uh, even bars. All of them need that reflectivity and that visibility in there. So this is a great material to be able to work with to get some cool designs out there for them. Okay. Let's talk about masks. Uh, actually, I'm going to back up. I, I did miss one thing on here. The uh, I said Evolutions Mask for Solutions Metallic. Um, the sublock and quick print sublock, you're also going to want to use that Evolutions Mask that's on there. So now we'll go on to the next one. Breaking down the mask a little bit, I, I used to use the analogy or the, the story with this that uh, TTD mask, it's uh, your lowest tack out of all the masks. And solutions mask is the, the highest tack. We used to have one in between that was uh, uh, called the uh, stretch print mask 
Um, we also have a newer one that's the EcoMask, and the EcoMask has more tack than Solutions Mask. So we'll go low to high. We've got TTD, Evolutions, Solutions, and now we have this EcoMask. Um, the TTD also had the highest temperature resistance. So if you're heat pressing with this material and you're using the TTD mask and you heat press, say, a material at 320 degrees, it's not going to affect that mask. It doesn't shrivel up. It doesn't shrink. It doesn't have any um, degradation of it due to the heat. But it doesn't have a lot of tack. It, it, it can't always pull up uh, what we want it to uh, on those harder to mask things, say, like the, the solar print that we talked about. Now, the solutions mask had a very, very high tack to it. The downside with Solutions Mask for anybody who's used it, and that's the yellow-backed mask for any of those that have different rolls of mask in your shop and you're not quite sure what they are. The downside to Solutions Mask for me was always that it had a low temperature resistance. It was great for pulling whatever you needed off of its backing, very high tack to it, um, but when you heat pressed it, say you're again at 320 degrees, it shriveled right up. You could use it only once. The Evolutions Mask was kind of the the in-between on those, in-between TTD and Solutions Mask. And with Evolutions Mask, we kind of got the best of, of both worlds. I got the heat resistance of the TTD, and I got the tack of Solutions Mask. So for me, this was a great solution for just about everything I want. It still wasn't quite as heavy a tack as Solutions Mask, but it was still a higher tack than, uh, much higher tack than the TTD. So that kind of became my catch-all one out there. Now, EcoPrint and some of the other medias out there uh, needed a higher tack than even Solutions Mask with the adhesives that we're using to hold it onto the backing. Uh, so that's how we came up with the EcoMask. So if you're looking for something that has a very high tack to it, and I'm sorry I didn't have that on here, I meant to put it on and I forgot to, that EcoMask is going to have an even higher tack to it, and it's similar to the Magic Mask that uh, you can get as well. It does have a good heat resistance to it. Now, a lot of times when people are calculating out the cost of the garments and the work that they're doing, they'll, they'll take the mask and they say, well, I need, say I'm doing an image that's 12 by 12 inches. I'm using a square foot of media to, to print, and I'm going to use a square foot of mask along with that because I need to remove it from the backing, be able to transfer it to the garment, and then remove the mask after it's transferred on there. Now, with Solutions Mask, you get one shot with that because at the higher temperatures, it's going to shrivel right up, and well, you can't reuse it. But with the TTD mask, you could use that again several times. I don't, I don't know of too many people that got more than, say, three or four uses out of it. Um, and it also depends on the garment that you're working with. If I've got a very fleecy garment that's got a lot of fibers that come off in it, uh, I'm not going to have that tack available because that, those fibers from the garment are going to get onto the mask and not allow me to reuse it. With the evolution mask, having the higher tack to it and the temperature resistance, uh, same as with the eco mask, you can reuse this a significant amount of times. Now, whenever I calculate stuff out, I, I always assume that I'm going to be able to use the mask at least twice if I'm not using solutions mask because of that, that temperature resistance. Um, my wife in her shop, she has a claim to fame that she's used the same piece of mask over 13 times. That's, that's a pretty high number and it's not what's going to happen for everybody and it is based on the garment that you're using and how big the print is and how much the mask is and everything. But she's uh, got a personal record of 13 times being able to reuse the same mask. I would never use that in a calculation because I, I think for most instances um, you can get probably three or four uses out of a mask um, as long as it isn't a heavy fleece and heavy fiber garment like we were talking about. Um, so you, you can have multiple uses out of these. Um, my personal favorite right now is uh, either the Evolutions or the Eco Mask, and I have down here use the right mask for the right media. With those ones that need that heavier tack, I'm not going to use the TTD mask. It's not going to do me any good. Um, with say color print where I don't need a heavy tack to it, that's a great one to work with, and it's a little lower cost than the other ones, so it can save me some money. The problem is, is if you have four different mask materials in your shop, and maybe uh, you you have them mixed and matched all over the place, you lose track of which one's which, or uh, you run out of one without realizing that you try to use the other, you, you can be using the wrong mask for the wrong material. I have down here in a pinch, Evolution's mask will work for most medias, um, except for, remember we talked about the, say like the, the solar print, which needs a higher mask to it, 
and the eco print, which needs a higher mass, hence the eco mask. So eco mask would probably be the uh, the one that would work for most medias now. It is a little bit more expensive, so you have to weigh that in and factor it into all your cost analysis. Now those of you listening to this and thinking hey, cost analysis, stock and pricing, everything. Uh, we do have a webinar coming up in November that's going to be on how to figure out your cost analysis, how to break that down, and, and how to uh, find out exactly what you're paying for everything and then figure out what's right for your market. So we do have a webinar coming up for all of you out there that will address all of that. Um, so hopefully this has kind of uh, opened it up for a lot of you out there and shown you what the different masks are and how they work. So let's take a look at the next slide. Proper print techniques and tips. Um, I can't stress the first one in this enough. Make sure you have a good profile. And by profile, what I mean is in the RIP software that you're working with, whether it be Wasatch, Onyx, um, Rosterlink, or VersaWorks for the rolling printers, if you don't have the right profile for the right media, you're not going to get a good-looking print. Uh, I can't tell you guys how many times I hear from somebody that, well, my reds just don't look right, or my blue's not coming off in it, and I, I start digging into the this, this situation with them, and we get into the RIP program, and I find out that they're using a generic profile. Um, they're not even using a heat transfer profile, which most RIPs will come with a heat transfer profile, um, but it's not necessarily the correct one to use for these. With all of the medias that Imprintable sells, we have all the profiles for the Roland printers, and we also have have a lot of them for the Mamaki printers and some for the Mutos. So those of you out there that are using the different printers, we can help you with that as well. But making sure you have a good profile will make sure will make all the difference in your print. It'll take something from a dull red to a bright red because the profiles dictate where the color should shift to based on the white point of the media. So Solutions Opaque has a is a brighter white point than say a eco print. So my reds, the same red color in my, my job file is going to look slightly different on the two of those, but the profile will correct for this. The next one I have on here is RIP program settings. I see this one a lot too where somebody will have difficulties with the media and um, it's, it's not setting, the ink's not setting on there properly or when they mask it and then apply it to the garment, the ink is coming off and the, the RIP program settings were not correct. They didn't go into there and make sure that they, they use the profile temperatures for the printer. They still had it set at the printer settings or some arbitrary temperature setting and it's not allowing the inks to cure properly on there. In most of the printers there's two heater areas on them. One is in the print area that kind of loosens up the material and allows the ink to set in there and also starts the flash off of it to set those inks so they're not puddling and pooling on there. And then it has a dryer apron area which is usually on the uh, outside of the printer hanging off the end of it and that'll help to cure those inks on there. Even with those proper temperature settings on there, that ink is not completely dry. If you remember from the beginning of the webinar, we talked about how at a sub-level, those solvents are still damp on there. If I were to take that print off of there and say I have a really dark print, something that's red and, and black, it's got those heavy saturation of colors, and I've got a lot of mixing in there of the different inks, so we, we put the, the media kind of at a saturation end for ink on there. If I mask it right away and put it onto the garment and pull that mask off and then hold the mask up to the light, I'll see some of the ink on there because it wasn't allowed to properly set. You'll also see this if you don't have the proper RIP program settings and it's applied too much ink, too high a saturation level for it, or it didn't have the right uh, temperature settings. Different dry times for medias. Uh, most of the times, I, we did an engineering study with one of our customers and uh, they, they wanted to find out the optimal time for allowing the media to set before you put mask onto it. Now this isn't hanging off of the end of the printer. They, they were actually printing off the media in large chunks and they'd set up a wire going across their area there and they had pants hangers, the ones that have the two clips on the bottom of it and they'd put onto each one of those a little egg timer. And what they were doing is they were timing it to finding out the correct amount of time after it had come off the printer before they could weed it and apply mask to it without having any of the ink transfer over to the mask and having it properly set on there so that when it went through the wash cycle after that, our inks weren't coming off. If you have a lot of fading on a garment after it's been printed and applied to it, and then the customer takes it and they come back five washes later and they say, hey, the ink is just it's fading, it's gone. Most of the time we can track that back to improper dry time and improper rip settings on it. So it's very important on this. 
by the way, the engineering study, they found out it was 29 minutes and I think 34 seconds. So what I tell people is 30 minutes. If you're printing it, especially with heavy saturation colors like reds and blacks, deep blues, or anything like that, you want to give it 30 minutes drying before you're going to go ahead and mask that and then apply it to the garment. Okay. The first print second, we talked about that with Solutions Opaque. And that's the only media that I know of that has this issue where this can solve it. So you could do the registration marks and let it sit overnight. You could let it hang off the end of the printer for a dry time and then bring it back. Uh, I prefer to do the cut first, return to origin within the software, and then print right over the top of those cut areas. And that, that seems to work for most jobs. I'd say 85 to 90 percent of the jobs that I work with where I would have had an issue if I print and cut right away. Um, so that's a, that's a good solution to it. It also uses less media. If I was doing it with registration marks and letting it hang out to dry, I've got the lead-in media with the registration marks, the end of the media with the registration marks, and then the, the leftover at the end of it so that the, the optical eye can find those registration marks properly. So you've got a significant amount of material at a hefty price that uh, you're, you're not able to do anything with. It's just there for the registration marks. So I prefer the cut first and then print second. The mask before weed, we talked about that with Solutions Opaque, but if I had a really uh, detailed design and I thought it might be problematic to weed, I could still mask it before I weed it and weed it from the back side. Uh, along with the next one, the edge around the graphic, that one uh, I singled it out for Solutions Opaque, but uh, uh, actually that's the only material I can think of other than clear and air tech that you really need that edge around it of unprinted area. All the rest of them are great to print and cut right through. Uh, I've got here color match to make easier reading. This is, a, this is kind of a cool concept, and I've seen a, a lot of the bigger production shops are starting to do this. Um, what they're using is the color matching system from the printer, say the Roland system. You can print out a chart onto the media you're working with. And with that color, you're going to take it and match it to the garment that uh, you are about to apply to and find the spot color that's going to be able to match closest to it and in those internal areas, say on a, a little bit of lettering that's going to be on a left chest logo, they'll put that color in there instead of cutting it out. And that allows them to not have to weed inside of those areas, and it's still going to blend into the garment. You can't always find a perfect match for it, but it is a, an easier way uh, for weeding in there because you're not weeding in the inside of it. I've got down here test garments for unknown application. Uh, this one's very, very important. You get a new garment from a distributor or manufacturer and you're not quite sure how it's going to react with the different medias. Um, I always encourage people to test it out, especially with the nylon garments out there. There's different coatings for almost every manufacturer out there. So while I say solutions opaque will apply to any media out there, you still or any uh, garment or fabric out there, you still want to test it out there. Maybe do it on the inside of it or on an edge or somewhere that you can uh, kind of hide it if you need to. Uh, but you do want to test this out there. Now, last but not least, I've got resources on there. We're going to talk about that a little bit on the next slide. Uh, there, there's tons of forums out there. There's uh, the different websites, and then there's Great Garment Graphics and uh, myself out there for resources on it. Um, the resources here also profiles are available for most medias on myversacam.com. Uh, I can't stress it enough. If you don't have the right profile, you're not printing that media correctly, and you could have problems with it. Uh, the next one here I have is make a recipe chart and test your heat press. Where our manufacturer's recommendations we might have for a specific media, say, we'll tell you our recommendation is 320 degrees at 10 seconds. And uh, I'll have somebody call up and say, you know, I've set my press at 320 and I run it at 10, and it, it doesn't seem to apply as well as if I run the machine at 315 and I apply it for 12. Okay. That's what, exactly what I'm talking about, is testing your specific heat press. I could have six heat presses side by side. They were all produced in the same day off of the same line, same exact models on there, and all of them will have slight variations in the temperature. We're not talking 10, 15, 20 degrees. I'm talking a, a degree or two. And I also have different dwell times for the medias based on the garments. In uh, my wife's shop, she has these recipe charts, as we call them, over by our heat presses that on one side it has all the medias, it has another column for the temperature, the pressure, and everything else all the way down, and we've customized it for the heat presses we have. If anybody would like a copy of that, feel free to shoot me an email, and I will send you the PDF document or Corel file that has that, and you can test out your own machine with the materials and find out what settings work best for you. By having this recipe chart there, especially if you have multiple 
people in your shop makes it very easy for anybody to come up and uh, know what settings to use for that machine. Try mixed media designs for higher margin sales at Solutions Metallic is a great example of that. I don't have to do the entire garment with that Solutions Metallic. I can do maybe a spot of it in there or a smaller portion of it and mix it in there. Or maybe I'm going to use a CAD cut bling material to add an effect onto a garment along with, say, quick print. Um, mixed media designs is really a, a way to get a, a larger value for your garment. I had a gentleman that was doing his shirts. He was a boutique shop, but he had a lot of uh, specialty designs. He was an artist and he designed them himself. And uh, he, he wasn't moving a whole lot of them. And then he decided to take a little chunk of Solutions Metallic, put it on the lower hem of the garment. He said, uh, limited edition artist. Uh, artist drawing on the shirt and he had them numbered 0 through 100 and uh, when he sold out of the 100 he took away that uh, run on that garment and he charged $10 more per garment and got it because now the perception is by the customer this is a limited edition, this is a specialty item and it can garner that higher cost. So thinking outside of the box and using the different materials and medias I, I think is a great way to, to increase your sales. So um, we've got a Q&A session and hopefully we've got a few questions out there. Jody? Hi, Stephen. Um, April was wondering, I have one question so far, so if any of you have any questions, please feel free to type them in. We do have some time um, for Stephen to answer your questions. But April had typed in, um, she had missed a part on the reflective media and was wondering, maybe she heard that you have to call in to order it? You no, know, the, the reflective media, you don't have to call in. You can call in if you want. Um, it is on our website also uh, under the print and cut medias. Um, there are some other ones on there that we don't have in the catalog anymore. Um, reflective is a media that we're not getting rid of. It's just not in the catalog at this time. Uh, it used to be and then the new revision came out and it wasn't in there. Uh, it is still on our website and is available though. So if you're interested in that, you can either call or go to the website. Very cool specialty material. You can do a lot with it. and uh, there's, there's a lot of areas I didn't even touch on that you could uh, find uses for. Um, actually, I can answer this question. Wendy was wondering if the slides will be available for download. And yes, tomorrow, um, each of you who attended should receive an email. And in it will be the email address to the, um, the post webinar blog where you can actually view this video again if you missed it or if you were in the middle of working. And also, you'll be able to download a PDF of the slide presentation. Um, Martha was wondering which media would be the correct type to use to add rhinestones to and would be soft, would have a soft hand as well. Currently there are no CAD cut or print and cut materials that rhinestones will adhere to. Um, keep in mind that all these materials are vinyl based and the adhesives for the rhinestones won't stick to that. Um, you could use any one of them though and have cutouts for where the rhinestones will go onto the garment. You want that, that fabric for the rhinestone to adhere to. But currently there are no materials on the market that rhinestones will adhere to on the top. You would need to have an opening in there for the rhinestone to reach the garment. Good question though. Yes, that was a good question because we do actually receive that one quite a bit. Um, I don't really have any more questions coming in, Stephen, so I don't know if you had anything you wanted to wow. add or if you wanted to give a preview to your um, the webinars you're presenting next month. Wow, I'm kind of surprised. I thought uh, we have a lot of people here and uh, I know. throughout the whole webinar, so hopefully uh, I gave them a lot of good information. Hey. I don't think I'm that good at answering all the questions going through, but thank you guys. <laughs> you are pretty thorough. Wendy had one more question. She wanted to know which media would be best to use for vibrant colors. Uh, vibrant colors, boy, I think with the, the right profile, almost any of them will work. Uh, I've, I've been particularly pleased myself and my wife's shop with Quick Print. Um, that's by far her favorite media, and we excellent color reproduction out of that. Eco Print has a slightly less of a bright white point. Um, they, to get the most vibrant and the most punchy colors, it, you want the brightest white point out there. And I think Quick Print and Solutions Opaque have the, the brightest white point out of the medias. So those would probably be my top two for a really bright color on it. Now keep in mind that the colors are based on the gamut of your machine or the output based on the inks in there. And uh, having a right color pro profile and using a color matching chart will get you a better reproduction. Um, I do have some resources, Wendy, out there for you for color management, and I'd love to, that's, that's a whole other topic I, I, I 
personally love color management and could go on for a whole day about it. So uh, if you have more questions on that, please feel free to email me or give me a call. Uh, I'd be more than happy to answer anything I can for you. No more questions? Nope, it doesn't seem like it, Stephen. Okay. Uh, Everyone, I, I really uh, love to hear your video and webinar ideas. I, I am trying to get more videos out there. It's always a time thing, um, but we're always looking for great webinar ideas, so please send them to us. Uh, you can send them to me or to the Jody at Great Karma Graphics. My next webinar is in November. I think the, what day was that, uh, that one, Jody? Do you remember? Your next Jody, webinar okay. is November 27th. November 27th, and that's where a we're going to go over on how to price everything. I'm going to get into the cost analysis, not only looking at how much does it cost you for this material, how much does it cost you for the ink if you're using a print media, how much does it cost you for all the additional, say, for a sign media if I'm making a banner, but then looking at all the factors that go into the overhead of the shop and calculating your hourly rate that you need to hit. And then we're going to talk about... Um, try to get into regions as much as we can and give you some generalities. We get the question all the time, for example, say banners on how much should I charge, and I can show you a cost breakdown that it would cost you a dollar per square foot of that, but I know in Southern California, they're lucky if they can get $4 a square foot, where in the Northeast where I'm at, I can get $8 a square foot. So we're going to cover some of those regionalities in there too. So anybody who's trying to figure out how much, to, how much it actually costs you and how much should you charge for it, the two biggest questions we get. I highly encourage you coming on by and seeing what we got there. And I'm going to have some goodies for you at the end of that webinar, too. Absolutely. And here at Great Karma Graphics, I did want to let everyone know, we have a guest presenter November 1st. That is actually our next webinar. And it's really all about your online reputation. And um, even if you don't have a website, if you just kind of just really work out of the yellow pages, or if you do, what is it that people see when they Google you? Um, if there's no feedback or no... Um, reviews on your business, how this can be just as damaging as having reviews. And I know myself, I anywhere I go, if I'm looking at a restaurant, a business, I do look at online reviews. So this is a really good beginner webinar, just really simple. He'll also have some takeaways for you as well, um, just really about how to improve your online reputation, how to create an online reputation. So um, for any of you interested, that's definitely a great webinar to attend, and that is um, November 1st. Outstanding. I may have to join in that one. Too. I know. <laughs> Sounds like good information. <laughs> well, uh, I think that unless we have any more questions, that's we about do wraps it up. actually. We had oh, just a excellent. couple last minutes. If you have um, just sure. one minute, um, let's see. Lynn was wondering what are the best materials for performance wear, and Arlette was wondering the best material for vintage looks. For performance wear, you're, you're looking a lot of times for that stretchability and breathability. Uh, Solutions Opaque would be my material of choice for that, especially with anything that's got any stretch to it, spandex, under armor, anything like that. Um, if there, it's, it's also got the lightest hand on it, so Solutions Opaque would be the best for the performance wear. Um, for the vintage look, um, going on to, say, the burnout garments or something like that, or trying to get a, a more of like a sepia tone feel to it or something along that line. Uh, I found that EcoPrint works very well for that. It's got that matte finish, so it's not real glossy, shiny, kind of new looking. Um, and you can get some nice effects with that onto more of a vintage or muted look. Uh, that would also depend on the graphic quite a bit in the print process. Okay. Heather would like to know if she can get samples of the different medias. Absolutely. Go ahead and send me a, an email, and we'll see about getting you a bunch of samples so you can test them out. We love that. Perfect. I know. And then, um, John, this will be the last question we have time for, and it's actually the last question that came in. Um, wants to know if you have a cheat sheet that covers all the colors available in your heat transfer material? Uh, for digital print, you would get a cheat sheet. You would create it out of your RIP program. And I can uh, help John if he's using Roll and VersaWorks and show him how to do it out of there. For the cat cut materials, um, this, I, I do have a blog article that I've been working on and put it out there, but the easiest way to get a cheat sheet for the cat cut materials is to order a swatch book, cut them in half, and apply that bottom half of the swatch to a shirt. So now when somebody comes in, they can see that color on there. I don't like to use swatch books just on the book itself because you've still got the carrier sheet on there, and it can shift the color slightly. 
also having it onto the garment that entices the customer to go over and look at them a little bit more, and uh, you can hang it up in your shop, and it draws them into more of a conversation. Uh, but for the digital print end, it would depend on your RIP software. So, John, uh, uh, give me a call or shoot me an email. I'll, I'll help you through that. Okay. Well, I think this um, concludes our webinar. Thank you so much, Stephen, for educating us today. And My thanks pleasure. to all those who attended. I want to say thank you to everybody who attended. I know you have busy schedules, and those of you who are watching the video afterwards, thanks for taking the time. Um, you can reach me at 518-630-6655, and my email is right there, stephenimprintables.com. I'd love to hear from you folks on the, the different topics we've covered and anything else that I can help you out with. So thanks again for stopping by, and hopefully we'll see you to the next webinar. Yes, have a great day.